Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is so great to see all of you here this morning. Thank you for being with us in worship today. Uh, as we greet each other, let's also, we're going to wave to our cameras in the back. Just give them a nice wave. Good morning, everybody, on Facebook and YouTube and online, wherever you are. We are thankful to have you as part of our worship community this morning as well. A couple of things before we get started. Um, the Super Bowl is ongoing, as we all know, right? I just want to remind you that because of snow and weather, our time to collect was shortened. So the biggest need that we have for the food pantry is meat. And instead of having you bring meat in, we would just like you to make a cash donation instead, OK? Um, so if you are donating cash, make sure you write on your envelope, Team B. If you're a visitor. <laughs> If you're a visitor, you're on Team B, uh, or I guess we can split it. Um, if you haven't found a team, please come see me after worship today, oh, and you can put those in the offering plates if you're making monetary donations, okay? Otherwise, bring in all your food and your non-perishables and your toilet paper by next Sunday, okay? Because we don't have very long to go for that. Also, your prayer cards are in front of you uh, in your pews, so if you have prayer requests, joys, concerns, and anything else that you want shared on the prayer list, please make sure to fill those out and put those in the offering plate as well. We have such a fun morning for you this morning, so to begin worship here, we like to take a deep breath. <sighs> And close your eyes if you're comfortable, or just settle into your pew, and take a minute to breathe deep, and recognize God's presence in this place with us. We know that God is always with us. We are not specially summoning God here to be here this morning. However, in our busyness, in our schedules and our lives and trying to bring kids to worship and get up and going in the morning. God is often overlooked. And we have come here for the very reason of being with God and praising God. So just take a minute 
to focus your heart and your mind on God's presence this morning. As you hear these familiar words this morning from the Psalms, I want you to reflect on God being your provider for every single thing that you need. Putting aside your need to do and be and provide everything for yourself. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. God loves me so much that he lets me rest. In grassy meadows, he leads me to restful waters. God is the one that keeps me alive. He guides me in proper paths for the sake of his good name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I don't fear danger because God is right beside me. His rod and his staff protect me. He loves me so much, he cares for every need that I have and sets a table right in front of my enemies. He bathes my head in oil and my cup is so full it spills over. Goodness and faithful love pursue me all the days of my life and I live in the Lord's house as long as I live. Gracious God, we thank you and we praise you for your provisions that are never ending. You love us so much, you give us the gift of rest and worship, and we are thankful for that. May our hearts and minds be focused on you and our worship be pleasing to you in your sight. As all of God's people say, amen.
Jesus says, my yoke is light. Come to me, all you who are heavy burdened, and lay your yokes at the feet of Jesus. Today we will do this through the prayer of confession. I invite you to join me. God, we confess that we are so weary that we do not know what it is like to be fully rested. We see children pass by and say, I wish I had that energy. However, we confess that we are also envious of their joy and freedom from responsibilities. Help us to find true, soul-sustaining, life-giving rest, the peace beyond understanding that Jesus promises so that we can find a new way of being. We pray. Amen. Christ promises to make all things new, so rest in the promise and the good news that in Christ we are renewed and forgiven. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to invite the kiddos to come up this morning. How are you? Good. It's good to see you this morning. Um, this morning, we're going to talk about how God uses water to protect us and care for us and show us that God loves us. What do you use water for? What kinds of things do you use water for every day? What do you think, Grace? To water plants. Yeah. And why do you give water to your plants? Oh, yeah, way to go. Our plants need water to live. How else do you, how else do you use water? What do you think? What do you think, Kins? You can cook with it, right? Yeah, you can use it to cook your food um, and wash your food and all those good things. What do you think, Ray? Shower. Necessity, right? We use it to clean our bodies. Oh, he's so sad. Today, we're going to use water in a different way. We're going to use it to do a baptism. Do you guys, have you seen a baptism before? Yeah, right? I, um, I want to show you, do you want to see the baptism font? It's right there. Should we go up and look at it? I want to show it to you today. Come here. Come on up here. It's okay. It's not scary. So we call this, can you see? Anybody behind me? Okay. Okay. We call this, can you see? Come up here, Charlie. Do you want to come up? We call this the baptism font, and the font is just a fancy word for this, okay? And we, what do we do when we baptize people? We pour the water in here, right? And then we pray. Can you see? We pray over the water, and we believe that God blesses the water and makes it special so that when we baptize somebody... They are a new person in Christ, right? They're washed clean and they're brand new. And then the whole church says that all of us are going to help you know who Jesus is until you get old enough to say who Jesus is for yourself, right? Do you remember what we call that when we do that? Confirmation. confirmation. That's right. So when you're old enough, you do confirmation and you get to tell everybody who you think Jesus is. It's pretty cool, huh? All right, so today we're just remembering that God loves us so much that in baptism, we are his and we're part of his family and he reminds us how much he loves us. So I want you to be reminded how much God loves you, okay? This is not baptizing. This is just remembering we're baptized, okay? Because we only baptize you one time. So I want you to put your finger in here. Can you reach it? Ready? Okay, now put it on your forehead and say, God loves me very much. And so does the church. Amen, good job. That's remembering your baptism, okay? Don't tell anybody you were baptized today. All right, should we pray together? You guys repeat after me. Dear God, 
thank you for loving us. Thank you for watching over us. And thank you for Jesus. Amen. Now, speaking of water, what have we been doing with our buckets? We collect noisy change offering for clean water every Sunday, right? So pretty soon they're going to grab a bucket and they're going to unleash on you and looking for your change. <laughs> so just be prepared. Do you guys want to get a bucket? All right, we have plenty. A child of hope in a world of strife, a child of hope who can bring new life, a child of hope in a world of hate, a child of hope who can elevate the dreams of man to heights unknown. Such is this child, this babe, the Son of God. child of hope for our sins release a child of hope who can bring us peace a child of hope who can ease our pain a child of hope who can help us gain the right to call our souls our own such is this child this babe this son of god
Let us pray together. Gracious God, we pray that you would open our hearts and our minds and our ears and our whole selves this morning so that we might hear your word and your message to us. It might fall upon our hearts without resistance and we might know that it is meant for us. That you might mold us and make us to be more like your son, Jesus Christ, in the ways that we speak and act and treat each other, and most of all, in the ways that we love. It is in his most holy name that we pray. Amen. For the last few weeks, we have been talking about tools that we use in our lives to help us strengthen our relationship with God. Because we know that no matter how good we believe our relationship to be, we can always do some work to make it better, right? And we can get to know God more intimately and on a more personal level. So the first week, we talked about prayer. We talked about how important communication is in any relationship, and especially with God. And I'm sure that as you heard that, none of you actively resisted adding more prayer into your life, right? Anybody do that? Okay. Last week, we talked about Scripture. We talked about how important it is and how God can speak to us and it can transform our life and our relationship as well, but that it's also probably the most neglected practice since only 10% of Christians report reading the word every day, and it's, it's the most neglected thing. However, again, I'm sure none of you said, you're not going to make me read my Bible, right? Anybody do that? Okay. Today we're talking about a new tool. One that can transform your relationship with God and your entire life. But almost, if not every single one of you, are going to actively resist doing this. You're going to make a list of reasons why you don't need to do it. You are going to feel uncomfortable. You may roll your eyes and laugh at it. You will actively resist doing this even though God has given us this as a gift and commanded us to do it, much of the time we refuse this practice. This tool today is Sabbath. Sabbath. Sabbath does not mean Sunday. Sabbath does not always mean worship. Sabbath has several different meanings in the text depending on where it is and how it's used. It has four meanings, actually. Sabbath can mean to stop. It can mean to rest. It can mean to delight. And it can mean to worship. And as we are going to see in today's scripture, it means stop. It means rest. It means cease what you're doing and put some margin in your life, have some breathing room in what you're doing. So we're going to take a look at this text this morning from Deuteronomy 5, and we're starting in verse 12. The scripture says, Keep the Sabbath day and treat it as holy, exactly as the Lord your God commanded. Six days you may do your work and your tasks, but the seventh is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Do not do any work on it. Not you, not your sons, your daughters, your male or your female servants, your oxen, your donkeys, any of your animals, the immigrants living among you, so that your male and female servants can rest just like you. I want to take a little time out. In the text, we do not usually see the females called out, right? This is usually um, spoken only to the men. So it is important to know that the females are named here for one reason— What would the females normally be doing when the text was written? And some of you are like, and still today, no. (laughs) What are they normally doing? They're preparing the food and they're taking care of the home. And so the essential things that we would normally say, this cannot stop. God's saying, you got to stop. Do you hear that, ladies? You have to stop. That's what the female are called out here. Going on in verse 15. Remember that you were a slave in Egypt. Remember that you were a slave in Egypt, but the Lord your God brought you out of there with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. That's why the Lord your God commands you to keep the Sabbath. 
Do you know that the Ten Commandments are listed in two places in the Bible? They're in the Bible twice, and this is not the first instance that they are in Scripture. The first comes to us before this in Exodus 20. Moses has come down from the mountain, and this is probably the one that you are more familiar with. He comes down the mountain with the tablets, and he reads the commandments to the people that are there. And I want you to take a look at this one and see if you notice what's different. Remember the Sabbath day and treat it holy. Six days you're going to work and do your tasks, and one day you're going to take off. Don't do any work on it. Not your sons, your daughters, your female, your male servants, any of the animals and the immigrants living with you. Because the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and everything in them in six days, but rested on the seventh, that's why the Lord blessed the Sabbath and made it holy. Do you notice what's different? It's the same command, it's the same need to honor the Sabbath, to keep it holy, and nobody's going to work on it. But what's different? In the Exodus version, the people are receiving the command from Moses, and God is speaking about the rhythm of creation, right? The rhythm that God created and then rested. God created and then rested, so you should create and then rest. This is the rhythm of the world. We work and then we rest, right? But in Deuteronomy, the ending is different. It doesn't say anything about creation, It says, you're slaves. Remember that. You were slaves in Egypt, and I freed you. Because when they received the commandments this time, the children of Israel have been wandering around the desert for 40 years. And they are standing on the edge of the promised land, and they're getting ready to step into that. They're getting ready to go into all that goodness that God has prepared and wants to give them. But God knows God knows that they were slaves, and God knows that there's about a 110% chance that they're going to go be enslaved to something else as soon as they walk into the promised land. These people have only known work their entire lives. They were slaves. Day and night, they worked. Somebody told them what to do all the time. They were forced to labor in all conditions, no matter how they felt, No matter how tired they were, what holiday it was, or what time of the day, they were forced to work. They were slaves. They answered to someone else. Their value was what they could produce. And as they stand on the edge of the promised land, ready to go into the goodness that God has given them all, the milk and honey, right? That land is supposed to be the best thing ever. And they're ready to soak it up. God reminds them of this because God knows that they're going to go in and be enslaved to something else because that's all they've ever known. So God puts Sabbath in place. Again, reminds them, you need a boundary. You need some margin. You need some breathing room, even from the good things. Remember who's in control now. You only answer to me. Your worth is not determined on what you're going to produce in here. God said, I freed you for freedom, not for enslavement. How do you think we're doing on that today, friends? Sabbath is still a commandment. We are still to implement some kind of rhythm of work and rest. Work and rest. To stop what we would normally do and take time to do what we would normally not do. And we resist that often. We fight it really hard, don't we? We believe there's no time to stop. We can't stop. We refuse to stop. We may not be literal slaves today, but we have done a good job of enslaving ourselves to other things. There is still value placed on us in society of what we can do, what we can produce, who we are. God commanded the Sabbath practice because God knows we need the breathing room in our life from good things, too. Our jobs, right? America reports the highest percentage of people who claim to be workaholics, right? Remember when I said you were going to resist this tool? 
I know there are so many of us in here right now that are going through a list of reasons why we cannot take a day off. We talked about it in Bible study. Someone asked me if God knew that he created dairy cows. (laughs) Can't take a day off. We won't take a day off. Before you start feeling like this doesn't apply to you because you have no problem resting from work, know that work is not the only thing that we become slaves to. What if God said the Sabbath meant you had to shut your phone off for 24 hours? Would you have a panic attack? What if it was just six hours or two hours? I'm going to guess all of us, including myself, would resist that very hard. We would come up with a list of reasons why we don't need breathing room from our cell phones, right? God has given us the promised land still today. We have all these wonderful things at our disposal, but we have become slaves to them because we will not cease. We will not put breathing room in there. We will not stop. We have no boundaries there. In work, in technology, in shopping and buying things and consuming things for our homes and our closets and social media and all of the things that are good, but we become enslaved too. We need breathing room from that because we were made for abundant life. It's what Jesus said. I came to give you life so that you could have it abundantly. And being enslaved to work is not abundance. Being enslaved to the things in our homes is not abundance. Being enslaved to pay for the things we have is not abundance. It is not what God wants for us. And if we resist, if we refuse Sabbath, then ultimately, we are saying we do not trust that God can provide for us. We are saying that we don't trust that God's in control because I need to provide and I need to be in control. If we don't create some breathing room around the things in our life, then we are not letting God be God. We're not allowing God to provide because we're already providing everything we need. We aren't allowing God to be in control because we're in control of it all. So we think. Isn't that so tiring, friends? I want you to think of Sabbath. Maybe not as a whole day that you have to take off, but as a practice that you can put into your everyday life. Don't resist it. Think about how good that feels to stop working and truly rest or truly spend time with your family. You know we talk about it all the time. But what if we did it? What if we believed that God will take care of the things that we don't for just a few hours? What if we shut down and shut everything off and just stepped away and was truly present with the people around us and with God? What if you stopped? What if you rested? What if you stopped consuming and stopped doing and stopped producing and just rested in the assurance that God's got this? May us be the people who stop resisting and start resting in God's goodness. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we thank you that you are a God who loves us so much that you command us to rest. You command us to take time off. You want us to lay down all of our burdens and our things that we carry on our backs that stress us out and make us anxious. You want to hold those things for us. So make us your people who do that who hand them over to you, even if it's just for a few minutes a day, and let you be in control, and let you be God, and let you sit on the throne of our hearts. God, we have so many things in our lives to be thankful for. We don't name them often enough, but let us, for a moment, name them out loud this morning and give you the glory for them. If you have things that you want to thank God for this morning, then I invite you to name those out loud. Family, we are so thankful for. And our
our health, we are thankful for. Teachers, Teachers we are thankful for. Birthdays. Birthdays, we are thankful for, yes. A purpose, A purpose we are thankful for. Farmers. Farmers, we are thankful for. New life, we are thankful for. Sunshine, Sunshine. amen. And we're thankful for bad weather, too. (laughs) At the same time, we know that there are things that are heavy on our hearts and that we should be praying for. So if you have people that you want to lift up in prayer this morning, I would invite you to do that as well. What was that? Okay. <laughs> Scott Skellinger family. Cheyenne Jensen's family. Rosie Tissell's family. Diana Pauley. Molly's little girl. Yes, we pray for the Perry community. Amanda's father. God, you have heard the prayers of your people, even those that we have in our hearts and haven't spoken out loud. So we leave these here with you. Remind us that you are already at work in these places and that we can let you be God. We can trust in your goodness. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, I'm going to invite you into a time of praising God through your tithes and offerings this morning.
please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. God of abundance, may these gifts reflect our view of you as creator and liberator of all. Multiply and use them to aid in the deliverance of your people from the burdens they experience. With grateful hearts, we always offer you thanks and praise. Amen. please be seated. Brothers and sisters, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty act of salvation and given new birth through water and spirit. And all of this is a gift from God offered to us without a price. Do we have candidates to present today? Today, I present Lucille Michelle Pease for baptism. Wonderful. To Lucy's parents and sponsors, on behalf of the church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness and reject the evil powers of the world and repent of your sin? If so, I do. Do you accept the power that God gives you to resist evil and injustice and impression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, I do. Do you confess Christ as Savior and put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as Lord in union with the church that Christ opened to all people of all ages, nations, nations and races? If so, I do. I do. Will you nurture Lucy in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example she might be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess faith openly and lead a Christian life? If so, I will. I will. will. Now, I ask you, the whole church, in person and online, 
Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, we do. We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Lucy now before you in your care? Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as described and contained in the scriptures. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Pray responsively with me. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and you brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set the clouds, in the clouds a rainbow. And when you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land that you promised. So we say... Sing to the Lord. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb, and he was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in baptism, in the baptism of his death and resurrection, so that we might be disciples to all nations. So we declare Christ's works to the nations, God, we pray that you would pour your spirit out, your Holy Spirit, upon this water and bless it as a gift to Lucy who receives it to wash away her sin, clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in your final victory. We say, all praise to you. Would you like to help with your sister? Yeah. Do you want to put some water on Sissy's head? Can you touch it? Hi, sweetheart. Good job. You like that? <laughs> Lucy Michelle Pees. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lucy, you being baptized by water and the Spirit, may you be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ for all your life. Amen. Now it is our joy to welcome Lucy as a member of your church and as a sister in Christ. What's going on? Well, we know it's true, so there we go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everyone congratulate Lucy on being with us um, as a member of the church. Yes? Yeah. Let's give it up. Yeah. 
While you sing, Charlie and I will show you Lucy and we will we'll present her to the church. You want to help me? All right. You can just remain seated as we sing, okay? No, she wants to play in the water. <laughs> Do you want to come with? You want to come with? You don't have to. Ready? Do we go? Is this your sissy? Say hi. Say hi, Lucy. Say hi, Grandma. Charlie's leaving. Say hi. Hi. Say hi, everybody. There we go. Say hi. Excuse me. I know. Say hi. Charlie left. One more time, let's welcome Lucy to the church. You guys can sit down. Thank you so much. Friends, do we have announcements that we need to share with each other this morning? Admin meeting Wednesday night. Admin meeting Wednesday night. Anything else? We have... As we already said, the reporter coming in and telling you that you only have one more week to get your Super Bowl stuff in, guys. So, there we go. Also, Scout Sunday, February 11th. Scouts are making breakfast for us before worship. Do we know what time breakfast starts? 7.30 o'clock. Okay. Okay. So 7.30-ish, we're going to have breakfast <laughs> before worship on the 11th. The scouts will present a little something during worship as well. Any other announcements we need to share? Then as you leave this place today, may you be refreshed, may you be refilled with the Spirit so that you may go back out and share that with other people. Amen? Amen. Let us stand and sing one last time. <laughs> 